Hello, happy full moon in Sagittarius. It's taking place tomorrow, Monday, June 17th. For my location, it's at 1.30 a.m. So find out the peak hour of the full moon for your location because whether you are focusing your mind on your goal, okay, or if you're doing a meditation to just get your mind, your body, your entire being ready for whatever that goal is, you know, it's good to know the peak hour. So hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. So it's going to be the full moon in Sagittarius. And I'm just going to go over everything that I've written down. Okay. All the stuff that I've written down, you can see it's like a lot. All right. So I just want to hit up some of the important things. Okay. From looking at the chart. But what I want to do is pull the card, the single card, and then I'll pull card for each sign. Okay. It's going to be a long video, so I'm going to get it going. So we want to set the intention for the main card message. So I switch it up. If you come to my channel, you know, I just go with the mood. Like if I feel like I want to pull, pull one message card, I do that. But I want to pull one for each zodiac sign. But the most important thing is the placement of the house, the planets, um, the zodiacs. So you can know what's going on there. Okay. And see how it applies to your life. And if it applies to your life, and it really does, if someone stops and think, they find it. If a person is never happy with anything that they hear, they're never going to be happy with any tarot reader, tarot reading, astrology. It's, that's just the way it is. That's facts. Okay? So here we go. We're setting the intention for the card for this full moon in Sagittarius, June 17th, 2019. Okay? The card is nine of cups. Okay. And that's you knowing your potential. That's you knowing who you are, your, your achievements, your goals, and really flaunting them, really not even flaunting them, honoring them, cherishing them, being grateful for your talent. What are you good at? What, even if you don't know what you're here for, everyone has a talent. Why are you here? What is your purpose? And yay. Okay. If you haven't noticed, ah, my braces are gone. <laughs> I took them off on Monday. So last Monday. All right. So let's get to it. So full moon in Sagittarius. So for Pisces, okay. Neptune in the 12th house. Okay. Now this can go. It is really hot. I was going to film this outside. I should turn this fan on, but, um, really hot. So. Neptune in the 12th house. Okay. And the 12th house is about your dreams. So I dream. Okay. Um, your spiritual life, you, just your, you, you as a spiritual being, right? So I'm not really saying I'm not reading for necessarily for Pisces yet, but I'm focusing on Pisces and Capricorn, right? Pisces in the 12th house, Capricorn in the 10th house. So this is a strong message coming from Pisces and Capricorn, position for everyone. Okay. Everyone can benefit from what I'm about to say right now. And Pisces opposite sign Virgo can benefit from it. When I'm talking about Capricorn in the 10th house, 10th house next cancer can benefit from that too, but everyone's going to benefit from these two things. I'm going to say, okay, so Neptune in the 12th house, if you're going to do a meditation, this full moon, think about it like this is and you know, I really wish I was going live on Facebook as well, but I'm not. So I'm just going to post this there as well. But think of it as the power of prayer. Okay. And think of it as whatever you're doing, whether you're meditating, whether you are setting your focus and your intention at this um, full moon, you really want to realize that the power of your words is really important. The power of your words. Okay. And you don't have to be too specific about the goal that you want. Just know that 
you want to be general, but you want to set that powerful intent. And by the end of this video, if you don't know yet, or if you have an idea, write it down. But you'll be able to set that intent. There's other opportunities. There's other, there's open opportunities for you. So you don't want to be too specific on whatever your goal is. You can have your goal, know it and go for it and make it happen. But just be as optimistic and open for opportunities as you can and know that you will be, you're asking for guidance and being open to guidance. Okay. At this full moon. All right. And be sincere because your, your, your words and your whole being has to be honest and truthful for the best outcome. Okay. So be sincere. And this is a great time for you to cleanse as always, right? The full moon to cleanse, let go of whatever you're thinking of in your mind or whatever is holding you back and really have no set expectation, but just be open for whatever is good that you really need to get you moving. And it's good to know what you want, but not be such a stickler for what exactly it's going to look like. And I've said that many times on my channel, right? Um, another thing that I wrote down was, um, yeah, I said that. So you want that result, no really defined vision, but you, you know what the result is. And that's you being really, um, sincere, I think was the word I used being sincere about it. Okay. So it's, it's an emotion. It's a feeling. Okay. So see yourself happy, see yourself smiling. That's the most important thing. Know that you're in the 12th house and this is like, you know, I dream my dreams. What are my dreams? What am you know, and the, your dreams are connected to your spiritual self. We are spiritual beings. So you're really thinking about not self-sabotaging yourself, like letting go of fear and wake up with a routine that empowers you. This is your spiritual life. This is you stopping your sabotage. Okay. So that's Neptune, that, that psychic trusting your intuition, that dream, that spiritual being, that just enlightened soul of Pisces, right? That it's so hard to restrict Pisces to like, oh, you have to marry this person. Oh, you have to live this life. Oh, I expect you to do this. You're just really coming from your soul and being really truthful to you. And just, that's just the pureness of anyone, right? You don't have to be a Pisces. You don't have to be Pisces opposite Virgo to really receive that message. Okay. Capricorn. Now we're looking at Capricorn in the 10th house. Um, Capricorn is saying about your career and your, and you really caring about your career and just your goal and how you see yourself, how others see you, your reputation, the prestige factor of, of, of who you are in your existence. So you really want to, um, do what is best for you. You really want to look at Saturn and Pluto in the 10th house and Saturn is about you working towards your independence. Okay. And we'll see a lot of that in the world and people working towards your independence and having a strong impact for yourself and a strong impact for others. Jupiter in the sign of Sagittarius in the ninth house is going to be really powerful for this full moon. Gemini in its third house is powerful. You have Saturn, you have, sorry, you have Jupiter in Sagittarius in the ninth house. You have its opposite sign, Gemini in its, in its third house. Okay. And Gemini having, um, is in the sun sign of thinking about yourself. And I'll get to that later on. Right. And loving yourself with that Venus energy. So this is powerful, but the main important thing is that Jupiter is in its ninth house in Sagittarius and Gemini is in the third house. This is a very special full moon. Okay. So you really want to get yourself unstuck. You know, you want to lift yourself up that, 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 that Sagittarius fire full moon with that Gemini air is like doing big things. It's making, it's bringing life to things. And it's, it's like firing up your, your being. I don't want to go too much into it because I want to save that for my meditation video, but, um, and Mars in the North node in cancer is really saying, have compassion for yourself, reach your highest potential, ask yourself what it is, feel what it is, know what it is. Even if you have to dig back to your childhood or to what you feel really passionate about right now, and you know that this is it, you want to tap into that, this portal of the full moon. Okay. So going back nine, that's so interesting. I just thought nine, ninth house. 
nine of cups cups represent water emotions right um you really want to sit with this and say what are my abilities what can i do you know and really know yourself and know what you're going for all right know what you want okay so let's start it off i'm going to start off with scorpio and then end it with sagittarius that's how i wrote it down okay so before i get started the most important thing is to realize that i want to touch on after this full moon this full moon is so huge so this is you really making a big shift for yourself okay because we have july 2nd coming up is the solar eclipse coming up okay and that's going to be solar eclipse total eclipse you want to really prepare yourself for this because we don't know what what exactly is going to happen you know um are we going to get clouds in the sky we're going to be able to see the sky is there something that's mystical happening i've been hearing people talking about and it's so funny because it was the end of last year beginning of this year i had a dream of like being on a planet where I could see several planets in the night sky, like a Saturn, like rings around it. So it would be really interesting to see what this solar eclipse is going to be like, you know, and our galaxy is moving around in space. So who knows what we will come across, you know, but it's just really interesting that, and I, and I believe that everyone has had these dreams throughout the times of wow, what if our planet where we are, we could see another planet really close up other than seeing like the sun and the moon. That would be cool. And what would that mean for us? Would that be a good thing? I don't know. Okay, so let's start off with uh, Scorpio. So Scorpio will have eighth and seventh house issues. I'm not going to go into detail on these issues. So look up what eighth house issues are, uh, what seventh house issues are, just to keep the flow of the video going. There's, there's no planets in Scorpio, so it's really the 8th house issues and 7th house issues. But the main thing is everything that I've said before about um, Pisces, Capricorn. So you're either on a Neptune vibe for this full moon or you're on that Capricorn 10th house vibe, okay, from what I just spoke about earlier. So those, one of those will, will really relate to you and what's going on in your chart, okay? So what houses you're in and so on you know wh wh where's your where's your sign right now okay now for libra you are going to be facing a lot of um seventh house issues okay and the fortune fortune is also in libra okay so look that up and see what it means for you all right so just to keep the flow going now for virgo is it dealing with a lot of sixth house issues no planets so virgo can look to its opposite sign okay and to see what what is going on in pisces okay now leo is having fifth house issues no planets so when you have no planets in your sign you're looking to your opposite sign and you're also focusing on the strongest aspect that's happening in the chart for that particular full moon or new moon so you'll be focusing really strongly on what's going on in capricorn if there's no what's going on in Sagittarius and also what's going on in Capricorn for this full moon okay so there's a lot of strong aspects there and you can see how it works for you because when you know your chart you can say oh where's my Mars or what's my Aries like or what's strong in my birth chart and then you'll know from what I said on here hey I need to focus in on this let me look this up and see how I can really shift myself my life okay to reach whatever goal I want now for cancer in the fourth house cancer has Mars okay and this is all about you taking your actions and your desires any kind of potential that you have because you also have the north node in the fourth house okay so you'd be looking at things that's going to make your home life better your inner world you're nurturing yourself okay cancer and um, you also have mercury so you're really keeping yourself calm in your communication but with this mercury energy you're in deep thought and this deep thought is going to help you to really see where you want to go to really propel yourself to your goal and stay focused okay so a lot of deep thought and communicating with yourself you really want to get um that north node 
is your highest potential what is your potential so a lot of you are working on things that's going to better your present and definitely your future gemini the sun the sun is in gemini so we're still in the birthday season of gemini until the 21st just a couple more days so gemini this is about you thinking about yourself you focusing on your main concerns okay what is the main concern for you and your 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 longevity your vitality what brings you joy okay so gemini is thinking about that venus love beauty loving yourself appreciating yourself um beautifying your home and things with art you, you seeing yourself as art you know how can you make yourself feel better okay so this is just some of the aspects um taurus you have uh, first or second house issues mainly first house issues so putting yourself first okay um you, you have uranus so it's you really fighting for yourself even more okay and you putting yourself first um aries this is your point of healing aries so this is about you maybe taking time to rest healing yourself um letting go of any um ill feelings you might have towards uh any kind of situation um and just really propelling yourself forward um you're in the ascended part so this is this full moon you can use it to really uplift yourself give yourself guidance direction feel better about yourself um 12th house or first or first house issues um for for aries okay you want to really find your greatest healing at this full moon and propel yourself forward to what you really want bettering yourself in whatever you feel you it's hard for you to face you know so you can better yourself with something easy but it's not going to really benefit you and this goes for everyone unless you're really looking at hey what am i afraid to really look at and then that's how you'll better it better yourself pisces like i said before neptune in the 12th house you have lilith in the 12th house so you really there's a lot of fight a lot of fight for your own power your own voice but you have to use that power well you have to learn how to con how to have control of your own fire of your own anger of your own passion anything like that understanding interpreting your dreams really paying attention to them um not really having one fixed um uh understanding of a situation or a dream or your intuition but just being open minded so you can better guide yourself okay just be open to possibilities um and also don't allow yourself to overthink things and 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 just bring yourself off track so really finding that that true balance of of spirituality and your intuition okay and a lot of you will be dealing with your needs and your wants regarding relationships too okay aquarius a lot of 11th house issues no planets so for all the aquarius you want to focus on the strong aspects of this full moon and you want to think about um pisces position capricorn's position and also uh you want to focus on even aries position as well so seeing which one works best for you okay even cancer's position you want to focus on that house that north node you know your highest potential how can you enjoy your life and where you are right now okay um aquarius you can even focus over on um leo's fifth house issues too your you know you can focus on your opposite sign okay so capricorn 10th house we know we have we have saturn we have dealing with restrictions and 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 structure so a balance and a fight between between the having structure and and um and having restrictions so the good and bad of this restriction okay and finding that balance and knowing that with the south node here this is karmic too so really finding the lesson in this fight okay for yourself or whatever it is now with pluto this is a transformation and change so this means that whatever saturn is bringing to you if you truly look truly look at it as a karmic message and and find that balance and find what is just and right then the the transformation with pluto is going to happen and it always starts out with a little subtle change that's really is a huge change okay 
and it and becomes bigger than anyone would have thought. And that's that shift. And Capricorn is in the MC. So you're not going to want to put your energy into something that's not going to give you the rewards. So your keyword is reward only. And this is huge. Even though it's a full moon in Sagittarius, Capricorn is right there next to it. It's like they're like tag team. You know, they're like working together. They're like, all right, this is a relay race. And okay, Capricorn, you know, uh, you know, is there. And Sagittarius is just like, you know, Sagittarius is there and Sagittarius is passing it on to Capricorn. Okay. So Sagittarius is when I get to Sagittarius, you'll see it's passing it on to Capricorn. Okay. So this is like with Capricorn in the MC, it's like re rewards only. You're not going to waste your breath, your time, your energy on anything, unless you see that there's a reward. Okay. So whatever, whatever's going on with this Saturn, this South node and this Pluto, there's a reward for it whether it's a personal fight or it's a fight that's bigger than you, than, than yourself. Okay. But it's an overall good where Pluto is going to come in and make that change, make that transformation. Sagittarius is full moon. The full moon is telling you, Hey, what are my habits that are not serving me? And how can I flip those habits? Because within everything that's not serving you that you're not doing, even when I find it with myself, a habit that is not good, how can I flip it to make it a habit that's good? Right? Turning that negative into a positive because that's what the full moon's about. The full moon's about your emotion. So how are you letting... When we feel our emotion, it, we have a good reason for feeling it. We want to protect ourselves usually or protect someone else or protect something. Those three things, ourselves, someone else, or or something, an idea. So how can you flip it to where it's not destroying you as an emotion, but it's also bringing healing or something more positive, more constructive. Okay. Um, your instinct is also the full moon. So what is your instinct saying? And you're not basing it off of what you're taught or you're told. You're getting it from your soul, from your spirit. You're getting it from a place that can't be corrupted. So you're really looking at this full moon and you're, you're not really getting it from your matrix mind, if you will. You're getting it from your soul, okay? From how you really feel your spirit. And that's your best guide. Sagittarius has Jupiter in retrograde, but you still have Jupiter in your ninth house, um, uh, uh, Sagittarius. So this ninth house, the, the, main, the ninth house covers a lot of things. But the main thing is higher is, is education and informing yourself. And that could be informing others, but the main thing is self. So you're you're getting new information, new understanding about something, yourself, your situation, whatever. And you're more informed. And then what are you going to do with it? It's one thing to have the information, but then it could just sit there and collect dust, right? So uh, let's see. Yes. So this this is it now i didn't write down the descending so um i'm just trying to think who is in the descending and ascending is aries but i'm not going to trip on it i'm not going to trip on it too much but let me see if i can actually um find that okay because I'm kicking myself now. Because I, you know, if I feel like I, I'm missing one thing, then I'm not happy. So I'm going to pause. Libra, duh. If Aries is, Aries is opposite. So Libra is in the descending. So Libra, this is a good full moon for you to rest. So going back to Libra. And I didn't write it down here because I, I wrote down Libra in the seventh house, Fortune. Okay, so look up Fortune because I don't want to go into too much detail or else the video will be really long. But this is a good moon going back to Libra to look at what will be, um, what will bring you peace or just um, kind of taking a back seat and relaxing. This is like a relaxing full moon for Libras, okay? And 
you'll be helping Aries to shine, if you will. Okay. So, um, yeah. And you, you really want to kind of find that resting part, Libra. So that's, that's what I was missing. Okay. So let's see, I think I covered everything, but this full moon, what you want to do is, um, is finding your, your power, what will give you that boost. Okay. Cause we're in June. Okay. And if you're going by, uh, the Gregorian calendar, it's the six month, half of the year. Okay. Um, I don't want to sit here and think and work it out right now, but why not? Um, yeah, this is half of the year. So this is a point where you're like, okay, how am I going to make my shift for summer fall into uh, winter and just making that shift for the next six months. Okay. Towards December. So you're thinking of it that way. And you're thinking of, of July too. that, that solar eclipse. Okay. So what are the, sh what is the changes that's going to happen in this month? Cause it's just like in two weeks, pretty much is, um, in two weeks is a full moon. Okay. So let me go, let me pull the card for each, each Zodiac. I'm going to start with Scorpio again. So we already know that this is the main card. So I'm just going to pull. So Scorpio is page of cups. Okay. That's your card, Scorpio page of cups. And you want to think of it as, as you really getting in touch with your, your compassion for yourself. And, and you can write down words, writing down words, write down how you feel Scorpio and see how it, how, how, you know, let me know how the page of cups reflects with if you're dealing with eighth house issues or seventh house issues. Okay. Let me know and let me know how the page of cups is, but it's really compassion for yourself and really not letting your inner child die. I really feel like, um, keeping that joy for your life that you have, what makes you happy, keep that alive. But definitely, even if you have to message me, if you're too shy to, um, comment, but please comment because it really helps to fit my channel. Libra two of coins is for Libra. Okay. So see how two of coins Libra relates to if you're having seventh house issues. Um, this is about you really being calm in the midst of chaos. Okay. Virgo Virgo Knight of wands or Knight of staves. So no, trusting your intuition, Virgo, and how does this relate to six house issues? How can you trust your intuition? Leo. Four of stays, feeling comfortable wherever you are. Maybe if you're having anxiety about something, Leo, how does this relate to your fifth house issues too? Okay. Four of wands, four of stays. Cancer. Five of swords. I, Cancer, do you feel like you're in competition with someone? Someone's in competition with you. Do you feel like you have to um, really uh, put your best foot forward all the time or prove yourself? So just let me know. See what, what, that, what that says. Gemini. Queen of coins, Gemini. So really stay in focus on your goals and, and you know, your money and just, you know, it's, it's your survival. It's really survival and balance of all the elements. And Gemini, let me know how, how what that means for you, Taurus. Okay. Uh, seven of cups, seven of cups, desires, wants. Okay. So Taurus, what are your desires? What are your lusting for? What are your goals? What do you want? How does that match up with your astrology? Aries. K 
king of coins <laughs> aries how does this match up with uh, your prosperity and setting your intentions and what are you you know asking yourself what are your goals and how does it relate to your chiron positioning a time for you a point of healing for you okay healing uh, dealing with money you know pisces queen of stays the queen of stays makes things happen you know it's really strong belief in self and making something out of nothing that positive um striving forward pisces aquarius the hermit the hermit okay it's that recluse it's about um finding knowledge okay uh finding information uh seeking information seeking knowledge it, it you know look into it and see how does it speak to you let me know how how does the hermit um call to you to have that time to yourself to really heal reflect understand capricorn three of swords so capricorn the issue issues of the heart the heart chakra how does this apply to you how do you relate to this uh, what are your issues of love and um healing sagittarius your card for the full moon the ace of cups what the the creator card the god card the all the creator the being you know the uh the the healing divine blessed you know it's like this is great for the full moon for you to have especially if you're dealing with work and and self-confidence and and whatever uh sagittarius the, the the full moon card is the nine of cups okay water and the, the sagittarius personal card is the ace of cups so winning it's a winning at that divine level i like to think of that okay so i hope you guys enjoy this video thank you so much for watching please 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 um click love like comment share and enjoy this full moon this is a really powerful full moon that jupiter power is in effect um for you to expand on your optimism your opportunities your abundance um you this is a great opportunity to really see beyond what you're taught what you're told and to really educate yourself to inform yourself to enlighten yourself to really check in on your emotions your habits how do they benefit you um your instincts okay really tapping into that the powerful positions in the chart is uh for this full moon is of course sagittarius but also capricorn and and pisces has a strong chart as well okay so does gemini okay and um 